Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 30th of June 2021 and we're carrying out our regular morning update on the news, financials and gold and silver prices. And we can see yet again gold and silver continuing to weaken and may even still now have further to fall at least until Friday's non-farm payroll report comes out. So let's take a look. Good morning, and this morning, instead of being an overcast morning as it was yesterday, the sky is clear and the sun has begun to rise. And it's 9.09 a.m. GMT plus one. Few things to cover today. First of all, looking at the daily news, the main headline for us here, certainly in the UK, is gloomy Labour loses hope as Boris Johnson upends UK politics. Now, for those who are not familiar with the political system in the United Kingdom, we have two major parties in constant tension, one with the other. You have the government and the official opposition. The government is run by Boris Johnson, who's in charge of the Conservative Party, and the opposition is run by Keir Starmer, who is in charge of the Labour Party. And the Conservatives have been in power now for over a decade. Well, just a quick glance at this because this isn't a political channel, but it's interesting to note. Senior figures in Keir Starmer's UK opposition Labour Party already sees little hope of winning back power in the next general election as many as three years away. One Labour official privately gave the party zero chance of beating Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Conservatives, while a member of Starmer's top team in Parliament gloomily called it an uphill battle. Well, there have been lots of scandals surrounding Boris Johnson, and yet, to a large degree, like Donald Trump, he's been pretty Teflon so far. And we suspect that his rather, shall we say, non-traditional approach to politics seems to be working. OK, let's move on. UK consumers added to savings before lockdown eased. And now these savings are powering the UK economy. But on the downside, global tourism crash may cause $4 trillion loss to the world economy. And this obviously is down to the fact that many of us still cannot travel out of the country or are limited as to which countries we can travel to. Quite a key one, really, for most Western economies, online shift to cut UK retailer profits by $11 billion. UK retail profits are forecast to shrink by £8 billion or £11 billion by 2025. As the pandemic accelerates a shift to e-commerce, a report published Wednesday warned. And for those of you thinking of setting up some form of retail premises, do your homework because the whole concept of physical retail, in our opinion, is dead. You may survive with some form of boutique type or niche type establishment, but unless you're actually into food and you have huge, deep pockets, be very, very careful. Online, different matter. But we saw the next headline and it reminded me in particular of something I learned 40 years ago when I was starting out in my banking career and I was interested in then the options markets. They're nowhere near as extensive as they are today, but one thing someone told me, invest in tea. Tea is the future. And then we see here a fascinating headline, husband and wife team worth 2.4 billion dollars after bubble tea ipo and i'm not going to read this whole article just this tiny bit back in 2014 and i hope i pronounced the names correctly peng jin and her husband chow lin pledged their home as collateral for a bank loan to get their fledgling bubble tea business off the ground 
Today, the company they founded, Nayuki Holdings Limited, is valued at more than $4 billion after the stock started trading in Hong Kong on Wednesday. The couple's stake are each worth $1.2 billion, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. And basically, they've created an upmarket tea. They've sold this product at a premium price to all the rich and wealthy in China. Well, not really the rich and wealthy, but shall we say the those who are aspiring to become rich and wealthy. And this tea has literally taken off. In fact, it was created in Taiwan and became popular elsewhere in Asia. While it's frequently associated with tapioca balls that represent the bubbles in the name, Nayuki's version often contains different items, such as fresh fruits or cream cheese toppings. And it's nice to see a business success. So what's happening? There is something on Jamie Dimon. We're not going to cover that now, but we may actually produce a separate video on this one subject. What's happening then in the BBC? Well, of course, the big news for us here is that England beat Germany 2-0. So everyone is elated with that. And if you were to look really down the headlines, that predominantly is the major news of the day. In America, we've got a situation, what could have caused Miami's building collapse, that's that huge tragedy in Miami. But what we want to look at specifically, Facebook joins the one trillion club after court win, trillion dollar club. The stock market value of Facebook has topped $1 trillion for the first time after the tech giant won a court victory against US regulators. A federal court dismissed two lawsuits from the Federal Trade Commission, and we touched on this yesterday, and a coalition of states sending Facebook shares up 4.2%. It took the value of Facebook above a trillion dollars, making it the last of the big five tech firms to hit the milestone. Absolutely amazing. Hey, what's happening economically? Well, the dollar index, now it's 9.16 in the morning, so it's still quite early. Dollar index stands at 92.08, marginally up on the day by 0.03. We can see that oil is, well, WTI is up 12 cents, but Brent crude is down 12 cents. There is to be some news on the oil front. Russia has been commenting about their ability to increase supply. Stocks yesterday, well, we, we like to say it's marginally unchanged, although technically the Dow was in credit by nine points, the S&P by one, and the NASDAQ by 27. But percentage-wise, just a very tiny, tiny rise. Today, though, in Europe so far, we have the Euro stocks down eight, FTSE down 10, DAX down 32, CAC down 15, and the IBEX 35 down 63. Or apart from the IBEX, all within a quarter of a percent. And Asia Pacific, slightly mixed, but broadly down up to half a percent in Hong Kong. Just a quick glance before we specifically look at gold and silver. Just uh, for reference, we said yesterday an important report due out would be the Consumer Confidence Index. And that did come out for June, and it is higher than in May by 7.3 points. So it's 127.3. We'll see this has marginally affected markets, but not considerably. But today, the ADP Employment Report, that's where the eyes will be focused. Also pending home sales and the Chicago PMI will have a bearing. But the key report today is the ADP because that generally doesn't always follow suit and we've repeated this time and time again but generally paints a trend for the all-important non-farm payrolls on Friday which we believe will have a significant impact providing of course markets haven't already reacted to that in anticipation. Where do we stand with gold over the last 24 hours? Well see that gold is down $15. On the week chart, closed on Friday at 1782, it's now 1754. 
So you're talking about basically $28 down since Friday's close. It did marginally go above that on open, just after opening, but unfortunately has continued to fall, slight recovery and started to fall again. Silver, similar picture. Silver on the day is down 24 cents at $25.73. It closed last Friday at 26.14. So that's now down 41 cents. Not a fortune, but the trend is indicative. For those still in the market to buy gold and silver, your time will come. Still suspect it has further to fall, certainly before Friday, if not on Friday. Bitcoin, as ever, flying now over the last week is up $4,000. Actually, although the last 24 hours it's up $1,700, and the last few hours it's actually come down almost by that amount. But this is from a 24 hour period to a 24 hour period. $36,392 currently. Getting some trends here. How long they last, we'll have to wait and see. Now, yesterday we produced a video show raising rates will gold and silver prices go down or lower. And frankly, we think the answer is yes, not just because of Russia, but because of what is happening generally and the pressure this may put on the Fed to raise rates as well. And the day before, India buying crypto rather than gold and silver. Why? And you can see, quite frankly, the younger people in India are now buying cryptocurrencies because it's easier, it's simpler, and it's a five second trade. We live in the world of instant gratification. You try buying gold or silver in five seconds. I suppose you can on the paper markets, but generally it's the cryptos that have ignited the imagination of the young. That's it for now. Watch out for that ADP report. Thank you for listening. Please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully give us a like up. Share the video with whomever you may feel is interested. And most important of all, subscribe and press that bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And finally, this morning we'll be publishing a video on the Richard and Greg channel. And so please, it's the first one in a few weeks and we are announcing some changes. So do pop over to that and we've placed a link in the description box below. Disclaimer, Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.